Hey, ladies, gentlemen, and all Goombas watching this, thanks for stopping by. I assume you like warrior games as you clicked on this video here, and I really hope you do, because this time we are looking at my personal top 5 warrior games released throughout the years. Wanted to do this for a long time, and it's awesome to finally be able to do it for you guys. So keep in mind, this is my personal list, featuring my personal opinions, meaning neither mine or your list is wrong. So, let's just jump straight into some Wario action, shall we? <laughs> when Wario is not hunting for gold, we often find him making micro-games. The WarioWare Games is a unique series with fast-paced mini-games that really trains your reactions and concentration skills. And what better way is there to earn money than making games? Letting others make the games for you. And this is the case in WarioWare Do It Yourself. We kick off this list with a game of creativity. WarioWare Do It Yourself puts you into the world of game making, while still keeping the WarioWare style of gameplay. You have the classic characters, like Mona and Ashley, who holds a ton of minigames for you to play. But the big feature in this game is to make your very own microgames. Even though the microgames only last a couple of seconds, it's incredible how advanced they can be. A tutorial exists that introduces you to the making, and it's not a simple, boring picture tutorial. Instead, you and Wario learn together by going through a process of making a game, step by step, starting with a simple click-to-win game to a more advanced version. These tutorials are not only very useful, but very entertaining as well. In fact, I find myself playing through the tutorial now and then, just to have a good time. When making a game, you program it yourself, you can draw the objects and background yourself, and you can even compose the music yourself. Heck, you can even go into another mode and compose a full song. Then, after making a game or two, you can mix them in with the microgames that's already in-game, making your own microgames feeling like a part of the rest. This game is all about creativity and imagination, as well as it trains your brain. You should get this game. It's no secret that Wario is mostly seen in 2D platformers while searching for gold and jewels. Though there is one exception, Wario World. This GameCube masterpiece, released in 2003, is such an underrated game. Being the first and so far only 3D Wario game ever to exist, it sure delivers a fun playtime. In this game, Wario finds an ancient diamond that turns out to be evil, and he transforms all of Wario's treasures into enemies. Now, Wario must collect 4 keys to open a big chest where this evil black jewel is hiding, before landing some punches on his face and getting his castle back. The gameplay is somewhat similar to Wario Land 4, but at the same time it's very different. Unlike Wario Land 4, you have to complete 4 areas in a specific order. Each area has 2 levels with a final boss in the end. You might say, only 2 levels in each area. Is this game a bit short or what? But in fact, that's not the case at all. It's not only about getting to the end and beating up your enemies on the way, instead you have a lot of collection to do if you want to complete the game 100%. Each level has 8 pieces of a golden Wario statue, 8 red diamonds, 5 spritlings to rescue, and 8 treasures that each need a switch to be able to collect. So, as you probably can tell, Wario World is a game about exploring the levels, finding all the secret areas in a map to collect all items. Getting all statue parts in the level will complete a Golden Wario statue, rewarding you with an extra half heart to your total health bar. The game also comes with classic Wario moves, like Ground Pound and Shoulder Rash. This game is really fun, and is put very well together. Really wishing we could get another 3D Wario game soon. I miss Wario Land. In the past couple of years, WarioWare has grown bigger than Wario Land. And it's been a while since we saw a new classic styled Wario game. The latest one of these, however, has made my number 3 spot, being Wario Land Shake It, or Wario Land The Shake Dimension, depending on where you live in the world. To start off, this game looks beautiful. It's unique in style because everything is hand drawn. The levels are hand drawn, the enemies are hand drawn. Even Wario himself is hand-drawn. 
it makes the game a bit different from platformers I'm used to, but in a good way. Wario Land Shake It brings back Captain Syrup, a character that old school fans of Wario should be familiar with, and the opening and ending scenes are actually beautiful looking animes. But it's not only the graphics that makes this game feel different from the other Wario Land games. The soundtrack and the whole concept around it, it makes me feel like Wario is now a hero on the rescue instead of a greedy, more dark atmosphere that we're used to. But saying Wario isn't greedy in this game is just rubbish. You use the Wii's motion controls to shake loose a massive amount of coins from coin sacks, as well as shaking enemies, swinging poles, and more. Classic Wario moves returns, like shoulder bash, ground pound, including a new one where you will shake the ground with a massive punch, making enemies flinch and sometimes hidden pathways will open up. The puzzles in this game are amazingly made. They are challenging and clever in high class, but what gives this game real replay value is the missions. Each level has a set of missions that varies from each level. This can be to collect a certain amount of coins, finding a specific enemy, not touching water, and so on. Some of these can be fairly easy, but most of them are actually very challenging, which means you have to explore the level and find tactics on how to complete them. Furthermore, some levels also have a secret map, which, when found, will open up a new level that will have difficulty on top. These hidden levels are very challenging, and have very difficult challenges. In addition to this, each level also has three hidden treasure chests for you to find. So, as you probably can tell, you're gonna be a good player and play for a good amount of time before you complete this game 100%, making the game extremely fun. And combining that with the beautiful graphics, light and adventurous music, you end up with an excellent warrior game, and platformer in general. The first Wario game I ever played? It will never get old. And I love it and play it even today. Wario Land 4 is amazing. Also known as Wario Land Advance in Japan, Wario Land 4 delivers everything you should expect from a Wario game, and more. You have 4 areas with 4 levels each, with a boss fight in the end of each area. These 4 areas being a Ruby Passage, Sapphire Passage, Emerald Passage, and Topaz Passage each with their own theme, where Ruby is based on mechanics, Emerald is based on force and nature, Topaz is based on toys, and Sapphire is based on horror and spooky stuff. The gameplay is genius. You have to collect 4 pieces of a diamond shaped object, get to the goal, and activate a portal back, and get back to the portal. The thing is, once you activate this portal, you also trigger a bomb, so you have a time limit to get back, and on your way back, some pathways will be closed while new ones will open up, meaning you most of the time won't take the same route back. Oh, and did I also mention you need to find a key in order to actually open the next level? You also have a CD hidden in each level, that isn't necessary to find, but is more of a bonus feature. The game looks beautiful, and the design of the levels are incredible. And the bosses? Uh, well, I don't know, but for some reason I really like him. Every hit you land on all of the bosses feels so satisfying. Especially the boss of the Ruby Passage for some reason. You also have three minigames to play to earn coins you can use to buy useful stuff against the bosses. And these three minigames are very fun indeed. The game is a bit weird. The soundtrack you get when you collect in the CDs are mostly sounds instead of actual songs. Some even being creepy. And speaking of creepy, the final boss in this game can make your mind go, uh, um, what the heck is this? But all of this is a part of the game's charm and style, a reason why I love it so much. You can also choose between normal and hard difficulty, where the collectibles will be relocated in the levels. Heck, you can even have super hard mode, where you will spawn off with one heart only. Only true man takes on this task. Anyways, you just gotta love this game, cause it's a game to love. <sighs> Wario Land 3 
couldn't possibly, in any universe or dimension, leave this game out of this list. If you're looking for a fantastic platformer, this is the game for you. While playing this game, it just smells Wario all over the place. The music, design, story, attacks, gameplay, everything just feels Wario. Oy, where do I begin on this? The story is about Wario crashing his plane, but he remains unharmed. He finds this little cave with a music box, and he is for some reason sucked into it, only to find a brand new world inside. He is met with a so-called hidden figure, who introduces himself as the god of the music box, and that he has lost his powers because of an evil being, and that Wario now needs to find the five music boxes hidden throughout the land to be able to go back to the real world and bring back the hidden figure's powers, and that Wario will get to keep all the treasures he finds on his way. Yep, we heard you like music boxes, so we put five music boxes inside a music box! Wario's journey begins, and though this game is for the ancient Game Boy Color, the gameplay is where Wario Land 3 really shines. Each level has four chests to be found, a grey one, red one, green one, and blue one, each needing a corresponding colored key to be opened. Once you open a chest, you get the treasure inside and you complete the level. But it's more than that. You are not able to get all the chests to begin with, because many of the chests are hidden away in areas you at first cannot reach. Now the treasures you find will sometimes only be for collecting and not have any purpose at all, but most of them will aid you in your quest by either opening a new level, opening a new passage in a level you've already visited, or even make a Wario learn a new move. Pretty useful, right? And this is what's so cool about this game. You don't just randomly unlock a new level, like you actually very often do in many other platformers, but you see a little cutscene where Wario uses the treasure he found to open a new level. This can, for example, be an axe to chop down a tree. Some levels are even unlocked by combining two treasures from two different levels. But over to the most awesome part about this game. As I said, some treasures will allow you to go to new areas and levels you've already visited before. This can be that a door is now being opened, a tree has been planted in a few levels allowing you to climb it, a certain block has been destroyed, and a lot more. This means that you have to go back to previous levels, sometimes levels you've nearly forgotten about, and you think, oh, so that's how I got past that obstacle. And suddenly you're in a brand new section of a level you thought you were finished with. This feature is absolutely genius. For example, in the first level of the game, you don't get the blue chest before approaching the very end of the game, and you thought you were done with level 1, eh? Wario will also learn new moves, which is incredible, because Wario basically starts off with only walking, jumping and dashing. Throughout the game, you learn ground pound, a stronger dash, swimming, diving, throwing enemies, and more. This leads to not only making the levels easier, but it allows you to once again reach new places in levels you've been to before. I freaking love this feature. There's also bosses lurking around in some levels. You don't really know where the bosses are if you haven't played the game before. So you just walk through a level and BAM there's a boss fight going on. And to add more to the awesomeness of this game, it also has a day and night feature. Every time you complete the level, the game will cycle between day and night. This will do several things, including changing the look of the level to nighttime, putting lights in the windows in certain levels, changing the music, changing enemies, and sometimes change features in the levels. Also, there are certain places you can only reach using a certain enemy that's only there on a certain time of day. I know, it's freaking incredible. You also have a mini golf game that you sometimes have to play in order to complete some levels, but it can also be played for fun. Oh, if you only get to get a remake of this game. And that was my top 5 Wario games. I'd love to hear your list. What are your opinions? What are your favorite Wario games? Make sure to post them in the comments below. Drop a like rating if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with all the videos I upload. Thank you so very much for watching and goodbye.